Welcome to this video where I want to share with you some new perspective on how to answer the question that you might be cycling in your own mind as a healthcare practitioner or even someone who is working in a field where you're supporting people and coaching people and you feel like you don't have your own shit handled and um, you don't have, say, your health um, on board to really be the, your fullest potential. And that stops you from feeling like you're capable of helping others to overcome their health challenges or makes you feel like in some way you're a fraud, that you are you know, putting yourself out there as someone who can help someone, but how could that be even possible if you can't help yourself? And I really wanna talk with you about that today because I see that as uh, a major self-limiting belief system that stops people from not only getting to the level of health that they desire, but also stops you from being able to help the people that you're meant to serve, who, you know, the voice and the way that you share what you know and your experience is the exact way that there's a certain group of people on this planet. The way that you are going to be bringing your work to the table and your experience is exactly the way that they need to hear it for it to change and transform their lives. So essentially not stepping into your work as a healthcare practitioner, a nutritionist, a health coach, or any other kind of coach out there because of the self doubt and the self judgment that you have about yourself for not being where you think you should be is literally standing in the way of not only you getting those results in your life, being the healthiest version of yourself possible, but it's stopping others from getting the help that they need. And it seems like a logical question, right? Like, how can I help others when I haven't even overcome my own health challenges and I can't even help myself? Okay, so let's acknowledge some of the truth about that, right? Let's put our, um, our negative self-doubt subconscious thought programming at ease a little bit so we can like we you know one of the things you have to do is actually like connect with that side of ourself and not ignore it okay so it it's it it it's a logical justified question that you would be asking yourself that okay so daisy's here as per usual say hi <laughs> this cat for some reason she hears i don't know i must have a certain tone of voice when i do live streams and uh she always wants to be a part of it. She literally is coming up for every single one of them. I have no idea why. Um, are you supporting me? Are you supporting me? <laughs> so, okay, here's, here's, the, the, here's the place that it will impact your ability to support people to make transformation. It's that area of your life in your, you know, in your journey where you're struggling Whenever your clients get to that point, that's where you're not going to be able to feel totally equipped to be able to help them, right? Because you're like, ooh, that's where I get stuck. So it's logical, right? It's logical to think that. I invite you to consider something here. We are not meant to live in isolation. We are all meant to live in connection and interdependence with others in all areas of our life, including our health. And it's really difficult to see your own blind spots. And you shouldn't even expect that of yourself. Like you shouldn't expect that you should be Superman or Superwoman and be able to do everything by yourself. Everyone who's ever done anything amazing or overcome amazing challenges in their life either had a coach or something that they were able to draw on, like a person or um, you know an experience that they had or maybe they even read a really empowering book that they were able to just like tap in and tune into the energy and support of others, other humans, right? Everything happens in relationship. So one of the ways to get over that is to go and get your own support. So think about it this way. Why is it that you as a practitioner would expect other people to invest their time, money and energy in themselves to overcome their obstacles, but you won't do that for yourself. That's where the contradiction actually lies. It's not in that you haven't achieved perfect health yet. Okay. I don't know if it's even possible to achieve perfect health. Health is 
a extension of so many different things in our life. And you know, you can eat perfectly and supposedly do everything perfect for health. And still, you know, life throws us obstacles. Life throws us lessons. We can manifest health problems just from our thoughts, from our emotions, okay? So nobody should ever be expected to have perfect health. It's kind of like this thing where in our society, um, I saw actually, I was just at a bookstore the other day and it was like a series of books about how not to die, okay? And it was in the health section. And it's like, I get it, it's kind of funny, but there's, a, there's something sad about it too. It's like, we're not accepting the reality of life, that it has its ups and downs, right? That sometimes our health is amazing, you know, and sometimes we go through trauma in our life and that trauma starts to break us down physically. And it's not for the fact that we're not smart enough or we are not eating healthy enough or whatever, right? Like life is lifey. At the end of the day, everybody dies. Okay, like that's for sure, right? We're all born, we're, we all die. And where our health is, is on a continuum of that spectrum. So I invite you to consider getting some support to break through your obstacles and committing to one person practitioner to stay with that person, just the way you know that, that, that in order for you to help your clients, they need to stay with you. So together, you can work together as equals to figure out what it is you need to put in place, what needs to be changed in their life, diet, lifestyle, mindset, emotions, everything. You don't have to work with people in packages in order to be able to do that, to get life transformation, right? Working as a holistic nutritionist or a health coach is a whole different ball game. People, um, you know, you can, as a, uh, like the general public that, you know, they can walk into a doctor's office and they can, you know, get a pill to suppress something or get a surgery to, you know, just cut something out and they get instant results and they don't have to take their health into their own hands. They don't have to look at their own life and how they change or, you know, take self-responsibility really for anything. Okay. Your clients, for a person to work with a healthcare practitioner that's working at the level of root cause, that is working with life transformation, there's a bunch of things that they are going to have to keep looking at. It is not a quick fix. And there's a lot that needs to be put in place and continually installed into their subconscious mind. And what do I mean by that? So many of the, the issues that people have with not being able to heal, including the ones that you have right now about your own self, stem from belief systems in your subconscious mind. And the only way to reprogram your subconscious mind is through repetition. So coming to a holistic health practitioner who actually works at the level of root cause requires you to literally work with somebody over time and keep installing certain mindsets, belief systems into that person to change their paradigm, right? You can, sure, you can have somebody just come to you and, you know, you could hear what their issue is and you'd have some great diet and lifestyle supplement recommendations. You could get that done and you know, 30, 40 minutes of them telling you their problems, you listening, giving them some information, right? We can all do that. You know what? They can learn that for 25 bucks through prescriptions for nutritional healing, honestly. And then they have like, here's the supplements I take for this problem. Here's the dietary recommendations and the herbs and da, 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 right? They can do that. That's not life transformation, right? The people that want to work with you, they're coming for more. They're coming not just to get that, like the strategies, they're coming to have you hold the belief system that they require to actually overcome their health problems. You're holding them in the light of them being healthy until they can hold that for themselves. Say so together, when you come together as equals and you're working together with a commitment, a decision to make this the thing that works and the commitment to stay the course until it does, that's how you get incredible results with your clients. It's not about you knowing everything and being perfect. It's about the relationship. Okay, so I invite you to recognize that the healing comes in the synergy 
of everything. And that includes the relationship that you have and the way that you are able to hold in mind what they need to be able to hold in mind until they can resonate with you and you do it together. Okay, there's a lot of power in the mind and we can actually support people to live their, fulfill their goals and their dreams through our attention on it with them. So it doesn't matter where you're at with your own health. You're going to be able to do that for someone else. And also, of course, remember that you are uh, ahead of them, right? You have the knowledge because you've gone to school and you've studied this. And because you're watching this video, I know that you're somebody who's committed to lifelong learning. And you're becoming more and more of an expert every day with every single book that you read, every single podcast that you listen to. You are becoming more and more knowledgeable about the area that you uniquely are inspired and passionate about. So you have all of that at your fingertips. That's being resourceful. You don't need to know all the answers. You need to know where the answers are, right? Or you need to be open to the universe providing the answers to you as a practitioner. That's a spiritual thing. And it comes down to faith. And that faith has to be cultivated. You don't just, you know, I'll wake up one day and have that faith. Right. I didn't have that faith. It was life that put me in experiences, extreme experiences where I had to cultivate that faith because I had no choice. OK, um, I did a video earlier this week where I share my story a little bit more um, about how I got on this journey. I don't know if I went into detail about the mindset stuff, but anyways, I'm sure I will in a future video. But it was the experience that I had in life that g gives me that faith. It's not what I read in a book somewhere, right? It's, it's literally being challenged in life and overcoming obstacles. So this is one of your obstacles. The obstacle of the thought that you're not gonna be able to help people because you can't even help yourself. And that's actually like, it's actually mean, it's so mean. Would you say that to somebody else, right? Would you say to one of your fellow holistic nutritionists that they were telling you about their business and how they're going to, you know, go ahead and start their business and start helping people? And you're like, well, I don't know, because like, I don't know if you can do it. You still have some pimples on your face or, you know, that 15 pounds. It's kind of like wearing your health problems on the outside for all the world to see who's going to want to go to you for help. Right. Like that's literally what you're saying to yourself. And, you know, if you were to say that to somebody else, that'd be so mean and so rude. Right. Um, so if you give your give yourself the same level of respect and belief that you would put in someone else, at least. Okay. Hi, sweetie. Always wish that the little um, red banner thing wasn't there, because every time my little kitty looks up, I get to see her cute face. What you guys don't unless I lift her. <laughs> um, Okay. Oh, you're going to go down now. There she goes. And now I'm all full of cat hair, as per usual. I live most of my life with animal hair on me. Okay. There's more I want to say about this. Okay. One of the reasons why you're beating yourself up like this and this belief system keeps coming up and it's stopping you from moving forward and being a vocal about your work and being a stand for basically educating the public about natural health. And really essentially, you know, you don't do the, the work that you're meant to do. Like you are literally depriving people who need to hear it of getting that transformation. Right. Because, you know, sometimes we have this idea that there's, you know, enough people out there saying it, you know, we don't, we don't need to say it. It's like, it's really how you say it. Right. That makes a difference. Like 20 nutritionists could do a talk on how to heal their hormones. OK, I just did one yesterday on my um, nutrition wisdom with Sherry Raffle Facebook page. And the way I delivered that message was the perfect fit for my people. OK, you could take the exact same content and deliver it in your way. And the way you say it, even if it's the exact same content is going to land better for your people and your people if they watch my video would turn it off at some point right because i'm not their person right we're all the person for a certain group of people that we're meant to serve 
So don't underestimate that just the fact that you exist and you have your own unique flair and your own personality and your own unique experience, that that alone doesn't have so much value in being a catalyst for transformation in someone else's life. Okay. Now, one of the reasons why your subconscious mind keeps asking you this question or actually telling you, it's not even asking you, it's just telling you, it's just telling you, you can't help others because you don't have perfect health is because it's one of the things that it's doing to keep you safe. It wants you to stay the same. It wants you to have the same limiting beliefs. It wants you to do what's safe. It wants you to go get a job. End of story, that's what it wants you to do. It wants you to go get a job because that's safe, okay? Being an entrepreneur is scary. Marketing is scary. Doing videos like this is scary, okay? Writing blog posts is scary. Creating courses or uh, content for your clients, it's scary and it takes hard work. Right. And this part of your mind that wants everything to stay the same and do what's safe for self-preservation comes up with these thoughts to stop you from doing anything different to protect you. So, you know, one of the things you can do is when these thoughts come up is literally just say to that voice, like, thank you so much. Like, I am so I'm so thankful that, you know, you really want me to be safe and you're afraid that, you know, if I go out and try to help other people, that they'll make fun of me because they'll eventually find out that I'm not perfect. And, and I know you don't want me to feel bad. I know you don't want me to feel shame. I know you don't want me to feel um, whatever, like a fraud. So just talk to that little voice. But then, you know, you can say, hey, but I appreciate that, but I've got this handled. I'm a very strong person. I'm willing to stand up for what's right. And this matters to me more than the, it matters to me more that I am able to actually help somebody transform their lives than it does to save face or to look good because that's the kind of person I am. I have strong values and this is one of my values in life is that I'm gonna do what's right. I'm even gonna risk looking foolish. I'm even gonna risk looking like I don't know the answer or being found out that I don't know the answer. And I'm going to use that as an opportunity to find out the truth, to find out the answer, to expand my wisdom, to expand my knowledge. And I, I'm willing to take those risks because I know on the other side, there's so much more for me in life than to just be safe. So it's who you become on this journey that makes you a better practitioner, that makes you a better coach. So looking at this, this question as like, it's just one of the obstacles that we all have to go through, okay? Nobody has perfect health. I don't have perfect health. I have areas of hereditary weakness that show me when I'm out of balance. For example, PMS, which I just talked about in a um, training this week. It's not an issue. It doesn't mean that I can't help people with PMS. Actually, it means I can help people with PMS even better because I've been in their shoes. I've lived it. I've been on this both sides of the fence, okay? And I even know what it's like to backslide and then have to bring myself forward, okay? So wherever it is that you're struggling with your health right now, you know, it may be the thing that happens every time you go off track in your life and now it's a gift for you. And then you can pass on to your clients that, when you believe that, when you feel that in your soul and it's the truth for you, and when your clients come to you feeling like a victim because they are sick, you're not going to take that. You're going to be like, of course, you're going to have empathy and you're going to be kind, but you're going to stand strong in the position that they are powerful and capable. Hey, Diana, <laughs> that they are powerful and capable and they are not a victim and they are sitting in front of you because life pulled them to this place to transform their lives. That this disease, dis-ease is happening for them, not to them, okay? But if you sit and don't help people and sit with this thought and beat yourself up with it, all you're doing is making it so much more difficult to get yourself back up again when you finally get inspired, okay, or motivated. So you have to just act in the face of this thought. Give it the attention it's asking, respond to it. Morning, Shelly. <laughs> so <clears throat> let me tell you a story, okay? 
I know exactly what it's like to have a health problem and still help people with that problem. So when I was 36 years old, I woke up 176 pounds. That's obese, okay, on a whole foods diet, primarily vegetarian, probably 90% vegetarian, still at the point, and I'm still at, at that point in my life where I still really have to consciously choose to eat meat. So it looks like I should be thin, right? All I'm eating is like dal and rice and yams and avocado, potatoes and vegetables and sourdough and, you know, all these things that are considered to be healthy. And I'm literally in the middle of that. I am helping a woman with weight loss. Okay. She comes to me in December and at that time I'm 155. So I'm like, nobody would consider me like obese, obviously. Um, I don't think people even considered me as overweight at 155 pounds. I didn't, right? Like I was, I mean, I wasn't totally satisfied with that. I had accepted it because I gained, you know, 20 pounds after having kids, but I just kind of accepted that as that's my post having baby body. Um, and so this woman, she books a package with me for weight loss. And I'm thinking to myself, well, weight loss is easy, right? Like, you just eat a whole foods diet. That's what we'll do. And I uh, get on her scale at her house because I'm doing a package where I'm literally coming to her house. We do um, ret retreat day together. I'm like revamping her kitchen with her. It's all a very hands on package. So I'm in her bathroom. I step on her scale because I don't have one at home. And it says I'm 176 pounds. And I am so disconnected from my body at this point and what's going on that I literally have the thought to myself, this woman is kooky. She literally set her scale up to punish herself or something like that um, about her weight, right? Cause I had seen my mother do this. She had like set the scale up five pounds so that she would for sure never get past like a certain weight, right? So that that number would stop her and get her serious about keeping her weight at the way she liked. So this was a thing I'd seen someone do in the past. So instead of actually thinking I might actually be 176 pounds, I think my client is being nutty, okay? How ridiculous can you get, right? So here I am, I'm in the middle of a weight loss package. Somebody's paid four grand to work with me, okay? To lose weight. And as she's slowly losing weight and very slowly, why? Because she is um, in her 60s and has insulin resistance. And at this point in my career, I'm not aware of how when a person has hormonal imbalances and insulin resistance, the basic recommendations of just eat a whole foods diet is not going to result in weight loss in any um, short period of time. OK, you, you have to do a lot more when it comes to insulin resistance. So she's getting slightly thinner. I'm getting obese while we're in the package together, okay? So I know what the, that feels like. I'm not just like, you know, running my mouth and I've always been perfect and I've always had perfect health and I've always been skinny and, you know, da 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 da. I mean, I literally was having, like, on the outside for all the world to see, I was showing how incompetent I was. OK, weight loss at this point in my life was not my specialty. Um, I was a gut health expert. That is how I started off my career as a holistic nutritionist, is working with people with food sensitivities. So I didn't have the background. I also didn't have the experience for weight loss. OK, and I took the client on because I I just trust in the process. I trust that the answers will be revealed to me. OK, so. The universe revealed the answers to me in the form of me having the problem, okay? <laughs> so I could figure out the answer for her, okay? So you don't have to go through the problem to find the answers. There's many situations in where uh, the answers have come to me with clients and I don't have to have their problem for the answers to come. But in this situation, I just believe that it was part of the path, right? Like it was just to get me on this path. And that's how I had to look at it, right? Because I had to have that mindset, like this is happening not to me, but this is happening for me, 
so that I can transform my life. And that's how I took it on. That's also how I took on healing myself of mono when I was in my late teens, early 20s. Um, never missed a day at work thanks to natural and alternative health, right? And that knowledge of how to create a foundation for healing. So yeah, I know exactly what it's like. Did you know that when I was 176 pounds, because I was so ashamed of being seen in public, I barely was seen in public, right? Like I had stopped doing um, like talking in the community, right? Like I just, I remember being invited to this, uh, I don't know, it was like some festival. And I just remember like, I can't, I went, but I remember feeling embarrassed about where I was at, right? Because when you're a health practitioner and you are expected to look a certain way, right? Let's acknowledge it, it's true. You're expected to look a certain way you're expected to eat a certain way, okay? Um, and I still get flack now from vegans about my diet, the delish diet. I can't, you can't please everyone, right? To them, including fats, specifically animal fat in your diet, in their mindset is unhealthy, okay? So you can get flack from all sorts of different um, perspectives from your colleagues, from just the general public, etc. It doesn't, I mean, yeah, in the moment, it's, it, it kind of hurts. Like, let's face it, we're human. Okay. But you have to be connected more to your mission and to the people that you can serve than to getting approval or avoiding disapproval from people. Because I mean, that's ridiculous. You come to this planet to live like that. Um, and you have a bigger mission and you have to care more about the people that you're going to serve. So here I am, 176 pounds. This woman contacts me. She's like, you know, I put together this weight loss summit. I've got David Wolf, Dr. Gabriel Cousins, Marianne Williamson. You know, she's got all these big names for this telesummit. And she's like, I don't know, something just kept telling me that you need to be in this. And I'm, and it's weird to me, right? That she's asking me this because I've never, at, before I gained weight, or worked with this client in our weight loss package. I had never actually thought much about weight loss, right? I just had this idea of what it looked like and it was basically just eat a whole foods diet and do a cleanse and your body will go back to its natural weight, right? So it was so weird to me that she would even think of me for this weight loss summit. I Everything I put up out in the world up to this point was to do with gut health or cultured foods or eczema. And that's how she had found me is through one of my first businesses called Domestic Diva. But I was in your shoes. I think my computer's gonna die. I have to put this thing in. I was in your shoes where I was thinking, oh my God, like how, how, um, what would be like, how hypocritical or how incongruent or how out of alignment would it be for me to speak on weight loss when I'm obese? <laughs> but I have a habit of saying yes to opportunities. And I looked at the situation and I looked at it and I thought, this is an opportunity to, for me to give back to myself. I need to get in alignment with this. If I'm going to be interviewed as an expert on this telesummit, then I need to get myself into a place where I can feel that I'm in alignment to have that opportunity, um, that I am worthy of that, okay? So instead of using this thought, how can you help others when you haven't overcome your health challenges as an obstacle, use that as a, not the, the idea that others will, like to just avoid others' disapproval, actually use it as a catalyst to change yourself. Don't just do it for you. Heal yourself or go to a practitioner, stick with them until you get to the bottom of it. Don't switch practitioners. Don't go to one nutritionist and then a naturopath here and then a homeopath here and all this stuff and the, you know too many hands in the kitchen and it's, it's a sign you're, you're just trying, you're not committing, okay? You need to do this because you need to be able to be confidently get your clients to do the same. And if you're not willing to do it, then why should they be willing to do it, okay? That's where you're self-responsibility comes into play here. 
you need to show up in the way that you, in your life, the way that your clients need to show up to get results in your work. Okay, so I used this opportunity to serve others as a catalyst to transform myself. This is what, why your mind is giving you that question. It does not want you to heal yourself because that's the excuse now that you get to use for why you can't be a holistic nutritionist, health coach, whatever, a successful one, right? It's a self-preservation method. It's an excuse, okay? It's, it sounds like a reason, a good logical reason, but it's just an excuse to keep you safe and from doing what you're really meant to do in this world because of doubt, fear, all these negative emotions, things that you've been using to hold yourself back, those things are lies. So here's how you have to overcome it. You have to act in spite of it. So do whatever it takes to heal yourself, including getting support from another practitioner. So you can walk your talk. You're asking your clients to invest in themselves through your services. Then you need to invest in yourself through someone else's services. That's congruent. That's the only congruent thing that you need to do. You don't need to go try to figure out everything on your own. Okay. You don't need to be a self-made um, healthy person. Okay. Part of being healthy is being connected to a community, right? That, you, you know, your transformation should be involving community and connection. That's going to, what your clients are actually going to need. They're going to need that community and connection around their healing as well. So, I use that as an opportunity to lose weight, right? Instead of using it as an excuse for why I couldn't, I was like, now I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it for me and I'm going to do it for my, for these people that are going to get to listen to this telesummit and I'm going to do it for my future clients. Okay. So I did it. By the time I was scheduled for that call, I got down to 163. Okay. So I got myself out of the obese category. <laughs> just into the, into the overweight category. Um, and then I continued from there to figure out what had gone off on my body. And I used that as fuel that I needed to get this figured out because if I could figure out for myself, then I could figure it out for others and support them to figure it out for themselves. Okay, so please remember that story um, you know, you may have some health problem and people can't even see it. And you're using that as an excuse, right? Like I don't have, um, I, I don't believe that that is the reason why you're holding back. It's fear. It's fear of being seen. It's fear of making mistakes. It's fear of being judged. It's fear of not knowing the answer. That's actually it. So go back to my other video that I did earlier this week, because that's, you know, the root of that. When you have it on the outside, when people can see it, then I understand why your, you know, your subconscious mind is bringing up that fact like, oh, you haven't done it. So how could you help others? Right. Um, but I think, you know, what we just covered today is a lot of um, a lot of insight into why, despite that, you can step forward and start helping people right where you're at. And it's also in con conjunction with the intention to transform your lives. It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity in front of you. So don't use that as an excuse. Use it as a reason. Sarah Roman says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Yeah, well, that healing comes from within, okay? You have an in inherent healing capacity in your body that will heal you. You just have to get these mindsets out of the way. Do you see how that's one of the reasons you're actually, you're actually gonna stop yourself from healing because then if you don't have this excuse, what excuse are you gonna use, right? So that is actually one of the, the blocks to your healing is your unwillingness to serve and your unwillingness to have faith, okay? I said this in the other video and I, I, I so believe this, okay? 
that God does not call the equipped. God equips the called. So if you feel called, if you are drawn to this path of serving and healing others, then you were called. And what that means is, is that you just need to step forward and God will meet you at that next step and give you the answers and equip you moving forward. And that takes faith. Okay, so we've heard that saying, oh, fake it till you make it. Um, at some point I heard a, um, a woman, her name is Shonda Sumter. She has a different one. I don't know if it comes from her, but you know, I can give credit to where I heard it. And she said, faith it till you make it. That's a whole different energy, right? You don't need to fake anything. You just have to faith it, right? Recognizing that it's not you that does the healing anyways. It's God, it's life, it's their, the person's inherent healing capacity that's doing the, the healing. So if you just take yourself out of the equation, stop thinking about you and where you're at and you know what your shortcomings are and just get focused on the other person and helping them and you'll start to feel your own vibration rising out of the feeling of making progress in your own life and making a difference. And what that does is actually raises the vibration of your body and actually allows you to get into healing mode. Okay. You cannot get into healing mode with these negative, uh, negative self-talk that is putting you in a vibration of shame and wanting to hide yourself. Okay. So recognize that your belief that you cannot help until you've figured out your own health problems is stopping you from healing yourself. It is a major block and do it for you and do it for others. Just like a pregnant woman, right? When a woman is pregnant, she nourishes herself in a totally different way. Amen, says Diana. <laughs> yeah, truth, right? We have to listen to the voice of truth and it never speaks through fear and doubt. So, ah, thanks Diana. <laughs> This is a mission, okay? It's very similar to, um, you know, I know I'm not sure about the religious beliefs of everybody on this call, but I do know I have, I, I know at least Diana is a Christian, okay? I grew up in a born again Christian family. I understand that um, spiritual perspective. I don't identify with any religion, but I see it as very similar, right? Like, you know, when you're a Christian and you believe that you have something that could transform others' lives, you're willing to go out of your way to share that with people, even though you're not a perfect person, uh, you're not a sinless person, right? Same thing with this health movement. This is, there are so many people out in the world right now who are suffering needlessly because they don't even know that they were designed for health. They don't even get that. They feel like a victim to life. They feel like they have, you know, they're a victim to their genes. They feel that their health is in their doctor's hands. And subsequently, they also think of their life like that, that their life is not in, the, in their control. And they're not living the life that they were meant to live. And they're suffering emotional and physical pain because they don't know that they can take their health into their own hands. And who else? but a holistic nutritionist and a health coach would be able to spend that time with a person to help them use that suffering that they're going through as a catalyst for life, life transformation. Um, Shelly says the Holy Trinity nourish supplement and emotional cleansing equals healing. You rock. Yeah, exactly. People need to know this. This is a think of it like a mission. Okay, actually in the, in the beginning days of the health movement, the people who are like opening health food stores and writing books on natural healing were called health pioneers. They were doing health missions. They were literally going out and they were use, making that their mission in life, not to like, you know, spread the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, but to spread the gospel of health. Okay. Right. There is so much that is available to people when they understand how their body works and that they have they can use their mind. They can use their body in terms of how they move their body. 
They can use what they put into their body to literally shift their consciousness, to shift the vibration of their body so that they can get into healing mode. And it's really one of the biggest parts is those, that emotional stuff. So getting out of this, this question. So it's posed in a negative way, but here, and it's, and it's actually, it's saying, how can you help when you haven't overcome your own health challenges? It's actually coming from the voice of why you can't do it. Okay. So how can you do it? I actually did a little video about this, um, at the delish diet page this morning. Um, about how we're all programmed to be stuck on all the reasons why we can't do something instead of getting focused on the reasons how we could and actually moving towards those, taking action on those things and looking at them instead of giving any attention to all the reasons why we can't do something. Okay. So again, the why, the all these why I can't do it because I don't know enough, because I'm not healthy enough, because I don't know anything about business. Uh, because I have to pay the bills, because this, because my husband doesn't support me, because my kids are, you know, taking up so much of my time, blah, 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 blah. Those are all reasons that are coming from the why I can't. And every time you look at that, you're going to have evidence in your life of why you're right. Okay. Because we have a, another program as humans to want to be right despite the truth, okay? Um, and we have something in our brain called the reticular activating system. And what it does is it looks for evidence of to you, for you to keep thinking that everything that you believe is true. So you'll see evidence for what you believe over and over and over and over. And that programs your mind to keep you thinking in limited ways and to keep you thinking about all the reasons you can't do something. So you have to conscientiously disengage yourself from that type of thinking and consciously look for the reasons why you can't. So I invite you to take out a piece of paper and literally look for all the reasons why you can not only attain your optimal state of health, but why you can serve others in the process and why you can be successful in your health coaching or nutrition business. All right. So thank you for watching. And I look forward to seeing you in another live stream. This is um, our Nourish Nutrition Business live stream that um, is over at the Nutrition Wisdom with Sherry Rothwell page. Um, if you have any topics that you would like me to cover in a future video, please feel free to comment. Let me know about that um, or message me your ideas and I will be happy to do a training um, or whatever, a Q&A on that topic. All right. Thanks for joining and we'll see you again. Bye for now.